right. How's it going? <laughs> all right. Um, so today, or first, first of all, yesterday we talked about um, the perimeter and area of similar figures. Remember, the whole idea is if the ratio of the sides is A to B, then the ratio of the perimeters is also A to B, and the ratio of the areas is A squared to B squared. Any questions on any of that stuff? No? Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about today is um, something called the side splitter theorem. Okay, so the first thing that we should say then is uh, just a simple fact. And the fact is, if the line segment intersecting two sides of a triangle So I don't know if that's very clear, but let me just draw a couple pictures. So for example, if I have a triangle that looks like this, what I'm saying is if I have a line segment that is parallel to one of the sides of the triangle like this, this is parallel to this now. Okay, if I label some vertices, like say this is like A, B, D, B, and E. Then what I'm saying is this upper small triangle, A, E, B, triangle of A, E, B, is actually similar to the whole big triangle, A, D, C. So maybe that's obvious and maybe it's not, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because you have um, parallel lines cut by a transversal, which means that this angle and this angle are congruent because they're corresponding angles. And similarly, this angle, this angle are congruent because they're corresponding angles. They obviously, the two triangles share an angle, right? So um, definitely all the angles match up, but what I'm saying is the sides are also proportional. So if I had some, some lengths of the sides in question, like we could find missing lengths. Like for example, suppose the sides were um, something like uh, here. Um, okay, let's say it was, this was something like, um, two and five and x and ten okay you can set up a proportion with the sides of the triangle like if i redraw these two triangles independently of each other i have the top triangle which has side lengths five and ten and I have the whole triangle, which has side lengths 7 and 10 plus x. Okay. 
right? If I look at the whole length, the whole length of AC, it's seven, and the whole length of AD, it's 10 plus X, right? So I could just set up a proportion to find the missing length. I could say 10 is to 10 plus X, minus five is to seven. I set up a proportion like that. And then you can just cross multiply it to solve, to find the missing piece, right? Since the triangles are similar, we know the sides have to be proportional. So this proportion has to be true, and I can cross multiply it. So I would get, uh, if I cross multiply, I get 50 plus 5x, right? That's multiplying that direction. Equals 70, that's that direction. And then I could just solve for x. Subtract 50 from both sides. So 5x equals 20. And x would have to be 4. Okay. So the side splitter theorem is actually a shortcut version of this. The side splitter theorem says I could do this proportion, or I could actually do a simpler proportion. I could just say uh, the sides or the pieces of the sides of the triangle are just split proportionally by this parallel line. So I could say something like 10 over 5 equals x over 2. 10 over 5 equals x over 2 which gives you a little bit simpler proportion to solve. If you cross multiply this, you get the same answer, but it's a lot less work. If I cross multiply these, I get 5x equals 20, and x equals 4. Maybe it's not a lot less work, but it's definitely a little less work, okay? And there's other like equivalent proportions that I could write. Like I could write, uh, for example, uh, 10 over x equals 5 over 2. It's an equivalent proportion. If you look at the picture, 10 over x equals 5 over 2. If I cross multiply this, I get the same equation, 5x equals 20. That's another way to do it. Okay. Let's try another example. <clears throat> Suppose I have a triangle with a line like this. Let's say the segment lengths are 10, 8, x, and 6. So all that we would need to do is just set up a proportion. These two sides are proportional to those two sides. That's the whole deal. So if I set up that proportion, I get 10 over x equals 8 over 6. And then just cross multiply. So I get 8x, 60. So x would be 60 divided by 8, which simplifies the both divisible by 4. If I divide by 4, I get 15 halves, or 7.5. That's the missing line, 7.5. Okay. How about something like a triangle shape like this? A parallel line. Let's suppose this one is um, 6 and x and x plus 1, 9. But same thing. These two lengths right here 
are proportional to these two lengths right here. Right, those are the proportion, proportional pieces. So you have x is to x plus 1 as 6 is to 9. And then you could just cross multiply. That's all. So you get 9x equals 6x plus 6. If you distribute when you multiply one diagonal. So then 3x equals 6 and x is 2. We can answer any questions they want. Like they might ask you for the length of, um, for example, this whole segment here. They might ask you for that. So that's easy. If this is 2, that means this is 3. So that whole length is 12. Right? So you have to make sure, as always, that you read the directions and you answer the question that's being asked. Okay? I'll give you letters. Like this might be something like PQ. R S T, and they might say find the length of P R, P twelve, or they might say find the length of P T, which is just X itself. So you got to read the directions carefully. Any questions on that type of problem? Okay, so the second type of problem is actually really similar to this, no pun intended, and the the um, the. This is a slightly different fact, but the picture looks really, um, really simple. So it goes like this. Um, the fact is that uh, any two transversals to three or more parallel lines are split into proportional pieces by the parallel lines. Okay, that's a little confusing to just read. So let me just show you the picture here. It says there's three more parallel lines. So we might have like a parallel line, second parallel line, and a third parallel line. They don't have to be evenly spaced or anything like that, as long as they're all parallel to each other. And what this theorem is saying is, if I have two transversals, so maybe one goes this way, and maybe one goes this way. If you have two transversals like this, then those two transversals are split into proportional pieces. So if I label the pieces of these transversals, like for example, A, B, C, and D, what this is saying is A over B equals C over D. The pieces are proportional to one another. And you can see this is actually really close to what we were saying before. Before the picture was like a triangle, right? The picture was like a triangle. Let me draw it so I can see that still. The picture was more like a triangle with a parallel line. And we were saying A over B equals C over D. Well, this is kind of the same thing, except for the triangles just kind of opened up a little bit so that there's a third parallel line there. Okay? So, these problems are going to look almost exactly the same as those triangle side splitter theorem problems. If you have something like parallel lines and transversals, so maybe it's like a transversal here and a transversal there, we have to indicate lines of parallel. Okay, they might give you uh, segment lengths, like for example. They might say, suppose this is um, this is totally not drawn to scale, but suppose this is 40 and 10, and this is um, 2 and x. Okay. Do the same thing that we just did. You could just say x is to 40. 
times two is to 10, right? These two are the proportional pieces and these two are the proportional pieces. So cross multiply, 10x equals 80 and x would have to be 8. So that's all there is to it. Some of the problems on Delta Math homework are going to be triangles where you set up this proportion, and some of them are going to be parallel lines with two transversals like that. Any questions? Any questions from anyone else? Only once? Only twice? Okay, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>